thank you very much indeed. Um, bringing you right up to date now, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about my work as a weaver. Although I do not produce what you might expect of a weaver. Um, the work all revolves around the beauty of threads. So opening image there are some of my some of my bobbins showing a variety of threads and what have you. But the thing that captured my imagination when I began my textiles degree, thinking I was going to specialise in embroidery, was the idea of taking a cone of yarn, measuring it, controlling it, planning it, ordering it, and transforming it from this inert, loose thread into an ordered woven cloth. So that, that journey that some, that thread can go on is what sort of captured my imagination and has kept me going. I've been in business now for um, about 10 years. I was a very keen student. I uh, started my foundation course here in Carmarthen, did a degree in woven textiles in Birmingham, an MA at the Royal College of Art, and then a Weave Design Research Fellowship in Sussex. I would have gone on and on if my parents <laughs> would have let me. But um, no, eventually I, uh, I set up my studio in Cardiff and I'm now based in Tantristan, just outside of Cardiff. And I produce an awful lot of different kinds of work. I have what is described as a typical portfolio career in that I have income coming from lots of different directions. I make artworks, I make public art commissions, I lecture, and I'll tell you a little bit about my teaching at the end of this talk. Um, I'm a design consultant, I've done an awful lot of um, work designing blankets for Mellon Trigwint and lots of, other, lots of other companies. But on the screen here is a sort of an overview of all the different things I do. And I've dotted around on these, um, in this wonderful set around just a few of my woven samples, so you please do go and have a closer look afterwards. But despite having that overview of all the different things I do, and everything you see up there is woven, or in the middle there we've got threads wrapped around turned vessels echoing uh, bobbins, the work that I'm primarily known for is this. And I've got a sample here, which I'll hand around now in a moment. But these are cotton and silk threads that have been encapsulated in acrylic resin. So I shall pass on it. It's fairly heavy. This work stemmed from a couple of trains of thoughts. Firstly, it's about celebrating the beauty of the threads. I've, also, I've always been absolutely fascinated by the appearance of the threads on the loom, the warp threads, the vertical threads stretched through a loom in that moment before you tension them to start weaving. I loved the way that the colour would sort of crisscross each other, and to me it represents potential. It's representing the transformation that's, that is ahead of me. It's also, about, it's also a, a technical way of creating the, the most delicate textile structures and making them permanent. I love that juxtaposition between the hard and the soft materials. And I've been developing this body of work since about 2005. And there's lots of different permutations that I've explored. The objects are very three-dimensional, so I'm taking what's traditionally a very flat 2D fabric and making it into something quite solid and the, as, I, as you pass it around now you'll see that there's no right side or wrong side they're intriguing from all the different angles and I love when I'm doing um, uh, public shows watching people look at my work they tend to sort of duck and dive around the work trying to find where the mirrors are and try and figure out what they're looking at it's also about bringing textiles to an audience who think they're not interested in textiles. The hard material appeals to architects and glass collectors and what have you. There's something quite architectural about the work. And um, as I say, I, I, my work is collected by people who are theoretically not interested in fabrics. So there's various different, I say, permutations of the theme that I've been exploring. Here we have basically an unwoven tapestry two different threads have been looped around each other. So you can see the orange thread looped around the red threads to give the appearance from a distance of one colour bleeding into the other, almost like a dye effect, but it's actually a construction. Here we've got a very simple macrame knotting technique, 
where um, a, a thick cotton has been knotted around a central spine. And this is a great example of the wonderful internal reflections that happen with this acrylic resin that I use. You get perfect mirror images on the edges. And when you've got these diagonals happening, you get these lovely diamond shapes forming at the corner. And here on the side, you can see the layering of the image. The textiles in the centre, and you say perfect mirror images on the other surfaces. Here we've got something that looks more woven, something of akin to a traditional check, but these are just stretched taut threads. They're not actually weaving in and out of each other. It's, um, I say, it's, a, it's an unwoven effect of a, of a check, and a similar principle is going on here. And again, the different angles are really demonstrating those, those reflections. These pieces, the grey thread in these ones here, it's very difficult to photograph, but it's actually using a light reflective yarn. So when a flash hits it, you get an explosion of light. It doesn't take a great photograph, but when you look at them in, in real life, let's say if you change the angle of your gaze and the light hits it, it works in the same way as safety clothing. It's the same kind of material that you see edging, police uniforms, etc. So to start with, the bulk of the, the work that I was doing was very geometric, squares, cubes, etc. Um, but this was a commission um, to commemorate the ashes coming to Cardiff, or coming to Wales for the first time. And I try and treat commissions as an opportunity, an impetus to try something new, to stretch my practice one step further. And I was commissioned by the Arts Council of Wales and the Welsh Assembly to produce a vessel, I say, to commemorate this momentous occasion. Um, my partner, who's a cricket fan, was delirious at this particular <laughs> job I had. Um, but the inspiration for this particular artwork came from the shared language between textiles and cricket. If you think about the, the spin and the twist on the bowl, the, the, the ball as it's bowled, those are obviously... Um, phrases that we use to describe the, the quality of a yarn, the spin and the twist. So that's what I picked up on. We've got a series of hand-woven ribbons which have been cast into a flat panel. That, the shape and size of that panel is um, proportionate to the, to the size of the wicket, for those of you that know. And um, I didn't, <laughs> uh, but I learnt. And those, those hand-woven ribbons have been twisted, cast into a flat form, and then it was recast into a twisted form. So you've got these layers of twists and spins. The ribbons are gold on one side, black on the other. And when you get the strong lighting on it, you can see you get the lovely reflections on the surface. The shadow has been cast on the surface underneath, plus the gold adds extra interest. Now these pieces of work that I've shown you so far have all been quite small in scale. Those are the kind of works that I produce for exhibitions and sort of um, pri private individuals. But it's led me to, um, in the last couple of years, doing some really exciting public art projects. This year was the first big one, and this was for the Beanie Museum in Canterbury. They closed for a major renovation and have an extension built on, and I was directed towards this particular triptych window, which was going to mark the juncture between the old building and the new building. They'd seen my loose threads, small sculptures, and they wanted that on a bigger scale. Now, in that sort of public high-traffic area, the acrylic resin wasn't going to be appropriate, so I had to translate the idea across into glass. So I was very, very fortunate to be able to work with a wonderful glass workshop just outside of uh, Swansea and Clydach um, with innovative glass products and they helped me scale up and translate the, the idea across into toughened glass. So rather than an encapsulation process, this is a lamination. We have two layers of toughened glass with the threads cast into sort of a silicon in the centre. And there you can see the windows from either side. The cafe is on, in the old building, and on the other side is the reception desk. And you can see that the museum are very delighted with the windows and used the reds and the oranges as a theme throughout the building, including staff uniforms. <laughs> 
it tends to be that it's a bit of a domino effect in this, in this sort of line of work. Once you do one thing, it leads very nicely on to another, another commission, another job. This um, commission was awarded after I'd finished that Beanie Commission. And this was for the new hospital that was built in Aberdeer, the Cunnan Valley Hospital, which opened last year. Um, and I was commissioned to produce a series of nine wall panels which stretched down a corridor. And again, same sort of, same kind of principle of the, uh, the threads captured in, in the glass. And it's silk, cottons, linens that I tend to use for this. The natural fibres um, do the job very well for me. They're always very vivid colours that I use to start with, but they tend to become even more jewel-like once they go through this process. Now, I have literally just finished doing um, a very exciting commission, the biggest one to date. If any of you go to Thlenethly soon, you will see this glass canopy um, has just been built in the centre of the, of the town. So that red brick building is Boots, and there's the entrance to the market hall on the other side. Thlethley's going through a major regeneration at the moment. The town centre's been smartened up and there's been various building projects. There's a number of public art things going on as well. The architects have designed this <coughs> canopy, originally just going to be plain glass, but um, a public art consultant saw the potential for this to have something a bit more interesting going on, which is where I was recruited. Initially, they wanted a flat design to be digitally applied to a vinyl and sort of stuck to the glass. But once they saw my loose threads work, they wanted something of that ilk. I was rather nervous about that because this was outdoors. No textile fibre, no dyed textile yarn, I could guarantee would, the colour would be um, stable for decades. So I had to start thinking about other, other sorts of materials. And in my research into the sort of industrial heritage of Llanethly, it led me towards thinking about carbon fibre, which is derived from coal, and also um, metals, coppers, stainless steel, etc. Inspiration was drawn from the tin plate process. I was very surprised to learn that a lot of women worked in the heavy industry. I assumed it was going to be all men, but no, there were women there with rather alarming tools to do their, <laughs> to do their jobs. And there's also a very strong quilting tradition in Tlenethly as well. The image on the side there is of a, an award-winning quilt from, I think, 1910. When I was first shown the plans for the canopy, those three triangular wings reminded me of a quilting pattern. So I wanted to treat the canopy as if it was lots of pieces of cloth to be, to be pieced together. So that's a flat of the actual design. The, uh, the coloured panels are a, a, a vinyl that's applied to the, to the glass. We've got folded copper, of which this is a sample here which hopefully you can see there's a lovely moiré effect when the copper mesh folds on top of each other. So again, as you change your angle of your gaze, the fabric almost moves. Then there is carbon fibre, the black threads. So that's what is going on in that particular sample. And then the dotty design on the end is this, which is folded steel, which is echoing some of the, the processes within the tin plate manufacturing process where the, where the materials were folded. So we've got a couple of shots of those samples that I'm, that I'm handing around now where you can see various Welsh skies behind them. Not so, not so lovely day there. <laughs> a bit more blue sky behind the copper there. And a much better blue sky here when, we, when I was taking the photographs of those folded pieces of steel mesh. Now the, the canopy literally has gone up in the last week or so. It's still cordoned off, so I haven't been able to take great photographs yet, but I wanted to share that with you today. So that's, that's it in situ from various angles. So um, hopefully you'll go and see that in the flesh at some point and you'll know a little bit about what's going on there. Now, um, I was also asked to talk a little bit about 
um, textiles and higher education today. And I'm actually the co-course coordinator of the textiles degree course here in Carmarthen. It's a very unusual course in that we're tiny in comparison to most in the UK now. We've got, we haven't got space for more than 12 students in a year group. In most courses now, it's between 60 and 100. So we're a lovely small art college with small courses. And um, hopefully the kind of philosophy behind my work to surprise people, to push the boundaries of what you expect of weaving is something that I try to bring to the course. We specialise primarily in constructed textiles, but we do offer the full range of um, disciplines. So our students get a good overview of all of the, the, base, um, uh, the base modules of weave, knit, print, stitch. And we also have um, rug making facilities, dyeing facilities, etc. And by the, by the final year, it's entirely self-directed and the students, having done interior projects, craft projects, fashion projects, choose their course of study and focus on that entirely in the final year. One of the kind of key philosophies behind, behind the course is obviously entrepreneurship and thinking about what they're going to do afterwards. It's all very well as um, giving the, all these sort of grand skills, but I think the key driving force between, behind a lot of courses and individual student thinking now with value for money, what are they going to do afterwards? And we are not known for just being a commercial design course or a craft design course. We can accommodate, as a small course, we can accommodate all different ways of thinking. So we've got some images there of various graduates' work from um, over the last couple of years. Two students in particular to highlight here are doing exceedingly well. Um, Debbie Smith, who you can see in the image here, has carved out an extraordinary international reputation since she graduated about four years ago, I think. She is an outstanding student. She never produced a, a, a bad piece of work, but she had um, a real curiosity for making and for manufacturing. She was a brilliant draftsperson, excellent at drawing, and she has developed this sort of unique technique of making her drawings three-dimensional. She projects her drawings onto surfaces, plots out the drawings with pins, and then draws them with thread, wrapping the thread around all the pins. So she's done some extraordinary commissions for people like the New York Times, as well as creating large-scale installations. Alongside her, we have Sean O'Doherty, who graduated last year. She's a 10B girl, and she is an extraordinary weaver. She creates the most complex cloths. It was really hard work teaching her. It was brilliant, because she'd always have this big list of things she wanted to tackle with me, but she made me earn my, earn my wage, <laughs> um, which was fantastic. Just the kind of student that we love. Um, but she has a very kind of canny business brain as well. She knew the market for creating these extraordinary complex hand-woven cloths was going to be very small. So she's actually developed her aesthetic into digital, digital printing as well. So she, all, many of these cloths that you can see here started off as woven fabrics and got transformed into digital, digital prints. So they have become more affordable and easily to, easier to apply to lots of different product outcomes. So she's somebody who I know is going to be going places. Both Sean and Debbie's career started almost straight away. We take all of our students to New Designers, which is the, um, the London showcase of all textile graduates' work each year. And as a small course, we can take all of our students. We don't have to cherry pick the lucky few. We take all of our students up there and say so both Debbie and Sean's work was picked up en masse by lots of different people. And that's very, very heartening because you want your students to go on and flourish. But it's always great that other people can see what you can see. So um, that's a little bit about the course. If anybody's interested in more information about the course, there's a portfolio and some leaflets. And of course, you can ask me questions afterwards. 
some contact details should any of you want to look at my website. I also write the Warp and Weft blog, which is about interesting innovations in the world of woven textiles. It's an oft overlooked subject and I try and highlight and celebrate interesting things happening there. And I'm sure I've gone madly over 15 minutes. I'm really sorry. 